So at the end of my yoga session today, I was meditating. And as I was meditating, God spoke to me. It was beautiful. And what came to me was something, which is often the case, something I already knew, but it just was shifted into perfect, crystal clear focus, which was always there. The awareness was always somewhat there, but it just pushed it to another level of clarity that was so beautiful. But out of the blue, what swelled up in my heart was this tremendous gratitude and love for books and reading. And I remembered how reading books literally changed my life, right? It was the starting point on my inner work and out of work journey. It was the starting point of my me finding my way. 16, I hadn't read a book in my life. I had this argument with my older brother about success. And I find myself forced to find some answers that I didn't have. And for the first time, I'm standing in front of a bookstore for an hour trying to get the courage to walk in, walk in and I buy the cheapest book I could find about stock market investments, because I want to figure out how can you make money if you don't become an academic success. And I read it secretly when nobody is around. And that book and that moment of reading it and understanding something, feeling really empowered, changed my life. It made me addicted to books. And then I had the next flash. And I remembered last year, winter 2020, arriving in Austin, coming here with the mission of spending time with myself, being with myself. The first four weeks suffering every day, just watching nonstop Netflix, podcasting, just noise, 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 eating really unhealthily and having all this tension and knowing I need to face myself, but I just can't do it yet. I just can't. And so I'm drowning myself and I'm running away from this jump but I know I'll do it, but I have to suffer a little bit before I get the courage together to do it. And then one thing that happened that helped me, that almost was my guide, that took me gently by the hand and allowed me to spend more and more time with myself, more and more time in silence, find my center, let go. And for the first time in my life, I have a whole month of no content consumption, no TV, no YouTube, no podcasting, no audiobooks, no nothing, right? Was Dune, was the book Dune. Starting to read that book really made me fall in love with reading and books on an even much deeper level. And at this, my life has been a love story of reading, but it's been coming and going in stages, right? It's been very passionate, but shallow, and then it's been kind of absent, and then it's been kind of, you know, cozy and, and nurturing, but, you know, kind of tame. It's been like, it's gone through different phases. But last year was a spiritual depth of love, like a completely different level of awe. Like I was reading that book and I was in awe of the writing, in awe of the art. And it made me so in love, right, with that, that it allowed me to transition to spending four hours a day, five on the weekend, six, seven hours reading in silence, no music, no nothing. I was just sit there and read and read and read. And I would sometimes groan and moan and go, oh my God, how does he write like this? How could one human being write this? How is this possible, right? It amazed me. And that was a really important part, a bridge to go from drowning in noise, but holding on to something really dear, near to my heart, something precious, something amazing, that book, and then being able to eventually even let go of that book and spend time in complete silence. I never thought about it that way, but that's exactly what happened last year. And then I was thinking this morning, I had finished the book Silence, right? By Shusaku Endo, right? Silence by Shusaku Endo. I finished that book and the ending of the book, not the last page, but the ending, right? There's a little bit more writing towards the end, but there's like a clear, this is the end. The ending of the book moved me so profoundly. It shook me. It moved me. It hurt me. I was just sitting there and I had to decompress. I had to like deal with what I had gone through. And that final moment in that book that really touched something. It's one of the most beautiful things that can happen in a book where it touches something in your soul you did not know was there, but you've always had it. And then when it's touched, now you know it better. And there's both a delight and a sorrow. It's a difficult feeling to describe. 
was that sort of an emotion. It's been sitting and I had this deep mourning and love and pain and wonder and such a mix of emotion, but also gratitude. Like, oh my God, I'm so grateful. I found this book at, you know, bullshit library next to the espresso bar in this building that nobody's ever picking a book from (laughs) because it's just for looks. It's not really for reading. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm so happy. I would have never read this book. And I realized that reading Books have really been a guide, and we say this all the time, and I might say it even more in the future, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And when I became a ready student, the first teachers that appeared were books. There was no mentor that showed up. There was nobody in my environment that was like, I'm going to coach you, young man. It was books that became my guide, my teacher, my mentors that expanded my worldview, that took me by the hand out of that little world I was living, that very confined, little limited world and showed me the world and opened my mind was books. And still to this day, one of the most enriching friends of my life, through books, I have evolved and developed and changed, laughed and suffered and grown so much. So I'm so grateful for what is this book? It seems like you've known it your whole life, so it's simple. But just to be Zorba the Greek for a moment, what the fuck is this? Who came up with this thing that you can take a material and then take ink and you make little circles in a zigzag and then you put a number of these together and you hand it over to somebody and here is a whole new world. You've invented planets. You have created lives. You can share your deepest soul in a way that you could be best friends with somebody and not know them nearly in such a deep way as if you had read their autobiography or a story about their life, right? If it's done really in a raw and really deep way. Books are this black magic. You really enter completely new worlds. And the beautiful thing is that in many books, you enter new worlds through a new human being. Like it's not just that you're at a different place. It's that you are a different person at that different place, that you get to live a thousand lives through a thousand books. If you read openly with open heart, curiously, if you really surrender to the experience, and if the book is right for you, right? That's why the ratio of starting books to finishing them for me is four to one. Right, So I start a shit ton of books to finish a fucking book. Why? Because most books are not for me right now. You have to find the book that's right for you right now. Once you do that, it is pure magic. But it's always a bit of work to get to it. Sometimes it isn't, right? That book just came to me. I didn't do anything. I didn't even think about that book. I just stood there with my espresso and thought, huh, they have some books here. Nobody ever looks at them. I'm sure they're all bullshit. And then I saw the word silence on one of them, which is silence is sort of a big theme in my life. And I picked it up and then I looked at the cover and I went, this is kind of a dope cover. It's Japan, it's some priest. And I turn it around and I read a little bit about it and I go, well, I am intrigued. I'll get this, I'll bring this book back tomorrow. I'll dabble a little bit in it today. And then I went up and I started dabbling. And before I knew it, I'd read a quarter of the book and I thought, ha, I'm going to finish this book in four days. This book is awesome. And sometimes that's what happens. But oftentimes I've gone through phases and we always or often discuss this when I go, oh my God, Ramin. Just can't find a book I love. And then, you know, when you're in that space, oftentimes it takes me a while to know that I need to let go. You can't force love. You just have to keep going in a gentle direction. But sometimes then I go, no, this must be the book I will finish. And this must be the book that's good. And my mind has decided this is the right book for me right now. And then I just, every page is like, picking up heavy weight. Just nothing is effortless. Everything is an uphill battle. Every word, every page, every chapter, and you're like, ah, why isn't this getting easier? And when you find the right book, you're sliding down a slope of fresh snow and perfect skis. It's effortless. You just flow. But books have given me so much love, so much wonder, so much knowledge. And books are a special kind of human magic. They really are. I mean, language in general is magic and I'm able to make noises. And what I'm saying is generating images in your mind and a sort of understanding is kind of people like, well, what's so magical about it? Everything, absolutely fucking everything is out of this world mysterious about this. It's just that we've gotten used to the mystery. So we think it's obvious, but it's not. We don't know. You know, we know how to do it. And we have some explanations of how maybe the brain does this and then it does that. Bullshit. We have no fucking idea how this fucking magic is part of the experience of being a human and being alive. Like it's just magical. And to not partake 
not everybody's going to love books. For some people, the way I love books, they will love music or they will love movies. I love movies. I actually grew up on movies and not on books. So I really like movies, but I can't fall as deeply in love with it. But some people watch movies differently than me. Like these cinematic fans, like people that are really into the cinema and they notice the color scheme of the movie and the camera direction and just every little detail to them. They don't just watch the movie. They, you know, experience it on a different level. They might have the same experience I have when I'm really in depth in love with a book. But I had a friend, Sofian, asking me, few months ago in front of a couple of other friends, what is the difference between watching the movie and reading the book? The book seems like a lot of work. And I told him, well, what is the difference between going out with a woman, getting to know her, getting to dance with her, getting to argue, to laugh with her, getting to spend time and really meditate in deep connection, and then eventually making love and having passionate sex and really completely connecting in union. Or with the same woman, you walk into a black room, you pay somebody 50 bucks, your eyes are closed, their eyes are closed, you touch, oh yeah, there's a naked female body, and you just enter it. Do a little bit of human friction, you release yourself, and then you leave that dark room. It's the same woman, you know, it was the same two bodies. That's the difference between reading the book and watching the movie, <laughs> you know, that is pretty much the difference. It is the same bodies, but it is very different experience in how deep, how personal, spiritual even in some senses the experience is going to be. One thing you sort of experienced the surface of it and you get it was a human female shape and we had sex. But in the other one, you know, it can be a very transcendent experience. You really connect it on so many levels. And when you read, especially a book like Dune, the movie, but you can't compare. I mean, there are movies out there that are great and the books are even better or different. Or people that read the books say the books, that's fine. But it's very different. Like you can't even compare it. Just because you know the plot lines doesn't mean, just because I have the bullet points on your LinkedIn resume doesn't mean I know what it is like to work with you for a whole year, every day. It's not the same thing. And so, so for me, books are really a secret gate to different worlds. And why wouldn't you use this? If I told you I can give you a secret magical little door and when you open it, you'll enter completely new worlds, you'll be different beings. You'll be a woman, you'll be a man, you'll be young, you'll be old, you'll be in a war, you'll be pregnant and birth a child, you'll be sick and dying. Like if you could live a million lives through that magical door, people would be like, oh my God, I would go through that door every day of my life. But when that door involves turning some pages and looking at some ink, it feels differently. I think a big part of that is because of our conditioning around reading. We've talked about this before on this podcast, but really I think most of us have learned reading in school. So we basically learned how to play an instrument in a factory where we were paid to play one note again and again and again, exactly in the right rhythm. And just like everybody else, everybody has to play that one note again and again and again. Nobody can change. And you started hating fucking music. You're like, this sucks. Music is work. It stinks. It's so constraining. But that's not music. That's not making music and art. That was being in a factory. And that's really how we learn to read in school is we learn to read in a very specific way. Hence why people are incredibly uncomfortable to start and not finish a book. They hate it. People cannot not finish a book. They feel guilt. They feel literal guilt as if they're sinners. They're committing some crime. I have started not finished. Last year alone, over 100 books, right? And there's no sin in this. You just are searching to find what's right for you. Which note is right? You're jamming. You're playing a bunch of stuff. If you took every guitar player and charged them for every note they've ever played that didn't lead to a song they're committed to playing for the rest of their life, they'd all be executed, right? You can't give people that many years in jail. This is not how this works. So releasing yourself for some of these ideas, you don't have to finish the book that you start. You need to find the right book for you. And you can't decide what the right book for you is. You'll know it when you're falling in love while you're reading, when it's easy, when it touches you, when it inspires you, when it feels like work or homework, it's not the right book for you right now. You don't have to read books and fully finish them. Like both of us, I mean, I for sure, last year I read The Never Ending Story, Du Unendliche Geschichte, and I read exactly half the book and it touched me and it gave me wonder and magic and I loved it and I laughed and that was it. I have read this book. I don't walk around with the guilt of, oh no, I've never read this book because I didn't finish it to the last page. No, I've read this book. I just didn't read all of it, but I read it, right? If I work with you for three months and not for the agreed upon three years, did I never work with you? 
no, I work with you. I just didn't work with you forever or for a decade. I didn't get everything out of that book. But even when I read all of it, I mean, when you're an experienced reader, you know, I read many books from start to finish and a year later, I don't know anything about that book anymore. I don't remember anything. Maybe I just remember one thing. This is another thing. People think they need to remember everything and have all the facts and have all the storylines. And if they don't have the feeling that they could write a test and pass it on this book, they feel like, well, that was wasted time. Well, could you write a perfect test and describe the body of your first lover in every little detail to the last mole, especially if that first lover was not somebody you were together for 30 years, right? Maybe that when you were very young and maybe that was just for a short period of time. Maybe you know the outline, you know how it made you feel, you know some special moments, but you can't write a test on an experience, right? Maybe you had a beautiful sunset dinner and all you remember in your heart is how it filled you up with awe and joy, but could you cook it? for me? <laughs> Could you give me a list of the ingredients, you know, measured by the cup and pound? No, right? And why would you? Why do you need to? But people, again, because they learn to read in school and all they know is how school had taught them that reading is right. That's how they feel. If I read this and I don't know and don't remember everything at every little detail, I'm doing it wrong. And nobody likes to do things wrong. So people stop doing it. My mom, I still try to convince her that if she reads a paragraph and doesn't understand everything perfectly, it's not the end of the world. She can keep reading. My mom sometimes reads one page in a book 30 times. Takes her a week because she read the page and couldn't understand it. So she's like, all right, I'll read it again. And then she reads it slower. And then she takes a break and reads it again. And she suffers through it, right? But there's this real fear that if there's a part of the book she doesn't completely comprehend, she's doing it wrong and she should not continue. Maybe that's good for you to believe, but it's going to slow you down so tremendously. It's going to make book reading like you're back in second grade suffering doing homework. Who would do this voluntarily? I wouldn't fucking do this. Fuck this shit, right? But why do I read for hours and hours every fucking day? Because to me, reading is art. I start, I throw away. I start, I throw away. I start, I love it. I fall in love. And then it's a dance. Then it's a wild party. Then it's like I'm crazy in love with something new, with a new writer, with a new storyline, with a new world, new type of vocabulary. You know, that's the most beautiful thing. And then it finishes. At some point, it's over. And I kiss it goodbye. And then I start again. I flirt with one book, I flirt with the other, and sometimes I start and I deeply am in love with the book, and in the middle of it, that's that. There's some of the short book collections that I read last year, where I read maybe out of the 20 short stories in each of these books, I maybe read four, and one of them really touched me, and that was it, that was enough, that was what it was for me at that time. If I carried guilt for all this, oh, shit would suck, I would never do it. So, if you've ever read a book that you deeply loved, if there was ever a book that really touched you or transformed you, a book where you go, this book changed me. First of all, let me know. Like, stellyfd at gmail.com or at stelly on Twitter. Give me your recommendation. Like, I go through humongous volumes of books, right? I need all the recommendations in the world. So, let me know. But secondly, if you've ever experienced that, any book, it doesn't really matter. It could have been an English book in second grade or it could be a math book in fourth grade. Any book where you go, yeah, that book changed my life. That book really enriched me or that book really moved something in me. Then, remember that. Then you have the capacity to fall in love with reading and develop a different relationship if you don't already have it. Maybe you already have it. But I think we all have to get rid of the chains of our conditioning, not just in reading books, but today I will limit myself on that because I'm so high on books today and find new ways to read. I remember there was a time I thought I always have to read a book from start to finish, especially nonfiction books. Nothing is more bullshit than that. You can read, basically, you discover that if you read the cover and the summary, you got it most of the times. Like you got what you needed (laughs) in terms of facts. But you can just go through the different chapters and stop at every chapter that really speaks to you, that's currently actually relevant for you. And you just read that chapter. Maybe you read two chapters in the book. Boom, you're golden. You don't need to read all the chapters that don't relate to your problems or to your life right now, just because they're in that book. Like you need to be more playful in reading, have more fun with it. There's no rules. Do whatever the fuck you want, whatever pleases your heart, whatever makes your soul sing, whatever makes you go, oh, this was an amazing experience. That's the right way of reading for you. No matter what that is, that is the right way. Nobody can tell you what the right way is to read for you. You have to discover that yourself. But I would look for certain indications. Are you having fun? Are you smiling? Are you tense? Are you loose while you're reading? Do you feel love? Do you feel awe? Are you amazed? Can you not wait to get back to reading? Are you kind of like addicted, hooked? You just want to get back to the book. It's so much fun. If any of these or a combination of these things are happening, you're doing it right. Whatever way you're doing it, you're doing it right. Even if it's like, I always just read the first sentence of every page. I mean, that'd be funky. You're doing it right. If you feel in awe and love and it touches
much. She'll do you right. Who the fuck gives a shit, right? What other people would think. I love books. I'm not sure if that comes across, but I absolutely love books. I'm so deeply in love with them. And I'm so grateful. Today, really, a number of things flashed through my eyes, moments of my life. And I would see the book and I would realize, wow, yeah, these books were guiding posts along my path in life. Wow. Wow. I'm so grateful. It's been such a tremendous part of my experience of being alive is the enrichments, the guidance, the teachings, the depth of being able to pass through different dimensions and new worlds through the gateways of books.